and those who lead it to tell you the story of how each one of them has contributed to a rising India brick by brick. And it's a given, isn't it, that the start of the series can only be with the czar of India's real estate, DLF, the company which gave us the Millennium City and set in motion a vital change in India's urbanization process. Vasudha Sharma captures the curious, interesting, at times controversial, but the truly spectacular journey of DLF and the men behind it. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. Nineteen forty six, at the dawn of India's independence, an enterprising new businessman laid the first foundation of what is today India's biggest real estate empire. <laughs> Delhi had opened its doors to an influx of refugees in a newly partitioned India and businessman Chaudhary Raghavendra Singh could foresee that this was his moment to seize. And so he founded Delhi Land and Finance or DLF to build planned residential colonies in Delhi that even today remain its most coveted addresses. Over the next decade under Chaudhary Singh, DLF firmly established itself as Delhi's most noted builder. He started working on the concept that he will earn respect and confidence of farmers with him. So he made farmers as partners in progress with him. So actually he made farmers as, as his bankers. Mm. Farmers gave land, uh, land to him on, on, on credit virtually. And that is the story of the DLF. That he started with the faith of the people and he paid everybody back with profits. And this thing, and anybody who bought property from DLF became multi-millionaires. But it was the vision and the dogged determination of his son-in-law Kushal Pal Singh that transformed DLF from just a builder into the undisputed leader of real estate in India. But the journey to the top was not without its share of struggles and challenges. 1957 Nehru's government passes a regulation that pushes out the private sector from Delhi's urban land development, effectively putting DLF in the coal storage for the next 20 years. But DLF was destined for grander things. DLF rose again like a phoenix from the ashes. This time, Kushalpal or K.P. Singh scripted DLF's revival from the dusty rural heartland of Haryana. Beyond the last frontiers of Delhi lay vast tracts of barren land in a district called Gurgaon. In the eyes of K.P. Singh, Gurgaon was a land of opportunity where he could build a world-class city from scratch. His philosophy was do transparent business, let people make profit with DLF, let them be your ambassadors. Other side, make farmers happy. They must have confidence to you. So it was a unique way of starting to come and that gave the brand value to DLF. And unfortunately it was then nationalized, but that was the brand value which Chaudhary Saab created. And uh, I picked on on this story in, in 1980 and, and expanded on it. Armed with determination as his only capital, KP Singh began navigating a complex labyrinth of archaic laws in a politically hostile Haryana. The year was 1979 when K.P. Singh and his band of trusted men began the laborious task of buying land from hundreds of local farmers. By 1981, DLF had acquired 3,500 acres of contiguous virgin land and also clinched its first residential license. Soon, DLF was developing its first project in Gurgaon, a 3,000 acre plotted residential colony today known as DLF City Phase 1. Even the word Gurgaon was alien to Delhiites, so the word chosen by DLF to set that <coughs> destination was Kutub Enclave because people knew Kutub Minar as the last point of Delhi, really. And it just seemed that it's an extension of Kutub Minar. And it was much later that it got 
rephrase the deal of city subsequent plotted colonies with lush green parks tree lined avenues with commercial complexes in the vicinity were immediately lapped up by the new breed of the well traveled affluent indian by the success of its plotted developments DLF then ventured into group housing in 1996 with its first condominium project that introduced high rise living to Haryana KP Singh's vision of transforming Gurgaon into a modern cosmopolitan city had been set in motion but along with the triumphs came the tribulations as well from the 70s to the 90s DLF found itself entangled in a web of vendetta politics. The entire state machinery under the then chief minister Bansi Lal was out to wipe out DLF out of Haryana. But like they say, only with true guts comes the glory. Perhaps the former cavalry officer's stint in the army had already equipped him with lessons in crisis management. A chance encounter with Rajiv Gandhi on a hot summer day in the dusty fields of Gurgaon coupled with smart lobbying helped DLF break through bureaucratic red tape and crippling regulations DLF was destiny's child and there was no stopping KP Singh from here on a modern 18 hole golf course a first for india and one that could rival any around the world luxury apartments that have set a new benchmark in architectural design a new brand of living that was high on taste and comfort when i make buildings for dlf why they are so different than others because it's it's there's also contribution and that makes it you know into different it's like you know a chemical mixed with this it forms this chemical mixed with this it forms this so that chemical is giving you know good buildings shopping malls that redefined india's retail experience and classy office complexes that gave gurgaon its first batch of multinational companies now 3 decades later in the mighty corporate towers and elegant residential colonies that dot the skyline of gurgaon the dlf imprint is only present those who did come in early very quickly began to see the appreciation of their uh investment and as we therefore try to do more they bought more and, and then the word spread around that hey this is an opportunity which is actually becoming quite real and then it sort of became a self perpetuating uh, story and a lot of people made a lot of wealth uh, with DLF and it, you know it's a bit, and therefore you don't have to then market it beyond that it became a real story we made a lot of millionaires which came out of the gurgaon story Seekers owning a DLF property became a matter of prestige. The capital appreciation of properties of DLF have been far superior than some of the other developers. Um, so clearly, from a home buyer's perspective, if I bought it at you know eight or ten thousand rupees, and five years later it was you know valued at twenty-five or twenty-six, twenty-seven thousand rupees, there is a marked capital appreciation that has happened in that uh, property. A 2007 initial public offering is counted among India's largest but at DLF no matter how many milestones it will cross the work never stops After giving Gurgaon a new identity DLF marched ahead to newer geographies in India testing new formats and wooing new customers with the DLF brand Today DLF is India's largest real estate company in terms of revenues earnings market capitalization and developable area DLF is present in 24 cities across 15 states in the country and it has over 300 million square feet of planned projects while 56 million square feet is under construction Today DLF is building new suburbs across India and establishing its name in new markets from super luxury residential projects to holiday homes from devising the my pad concept of service apartments to developing niche properties for varied tastes dlf's residential business dabbles in various formats 
Wherever it goes, it strives to change the urban landscape, setting the benchmark for others to follow. Not one to wait and watch, DLF even takes up the challenge of building the support infrastructure around its projects. But like in any corporate saga, the DLF story also sees many twists and turns. In recent years, controversies surrounding a Competition Commission of India judgment has put into question DLF's 60-year-old legacy. Proximity to the first family of Indian politics has also earned DLF its share of critics and bad press. But for DLF, the greatest test of the brand's enduring appeal is its loyal customer. You'd be surprised that less than a double-digit figure were the number of people who even thought of inquiring after that order. In fact, less than, less than 10, where there were at least about 2,200 customers and many more in other projects. So I think that, that speaks for us. It was a great um, kind of, you know, push in the arm. The realty giant has now tightened its belt and restructured itself into a leaner and stronger firm. While the men and women behind this company take pride in being the leaders, they claim it's their humility to seek new knowledge that has kept them at the top of their game. The company is constantly seeking new methods of construction, tighter project management strategies and scouting the best talent in the industry. The company may have set many milestones in its residential developments, its influence on key urban development policies and in setting new industry benchmarks. But DLF is not one to rest on its laurels. While the next generation at DLF is already steering the empire towards a new growth path, DLF will keep itself busy building India. It never stops. That perhaps describes DLF the best. Even as you're watching the show, company is busy developing homes. And it's not just homes. DLF has given the country a whole new millennium city with skyscrapers and integrated office space which match the very best globally. On our way back, we'll get you the other story, that of DLF's commercial and office business. Ching. NDTV Profit Today at the center stage is the biggest of them all DLF Take a look at the journey of India's largest real estate company with its ambitions of creating world class office and retail real estate Oinita Moja gets you the vision and the mission. A chance meeting between DLF Patriarch KP Singh and Jack Welch, the much celebrated former CEO of General Electric, stirred the fire in Singh's belly to transform a sleepy little town in the outskirts of Delhi into a vibrant, world class integrated city with world class living and office spaces. KP Singh's vigor convinced Welch to set up General Electric's first office in India in DLF's office space in Gurgaon. GE Capital International Services in 1997, which later got christened as Genpact, and today Genpact is one of DLF's largest corporate clients. From then till now, it has been a long, arduous journey for DLF, building integrated office spaces of global standards in the new Millennium City. Today, DLF has quite a portfolio in office space which defines Gurgaon skyline along with this swanky office hub, the Cyber City. With as many as 24 office blocks in Gurgaon NCR alone and some presence in other cities like Kolkata and Chandigarh. Spread over 28 million square feet of office space, DLF has over 700 corporate clients including at least 70 Fortune 500 companies today. The occupancy rate is between 95 to 98 percent, perhaps the only developer in North India to clock such numbers. And DLF's ambitions are going strong. What we have done is that, you know, we, have, we were much advanced in, in our planning. So we went ahead and 
created the volumes to take care of our rental requirements. So based on that, you know, we still have around uh, 4 million plus to be the stock as, as on today. So which we are, uh, you know, hoping to rent it out in the next couple of years. Industry veterans believe that DLF has not only spearheaded the office space revolution in India, the real estate giant continues to dominate NCR's office market for a reason. Ecosystem management which is going beyond just managing the building and at the same time uh, you know you're, you're kind of sensitive to the environment in terms of uh, for example things like 100% recycling of hot water, uh, you know running of STP plants, uh, the water connections from the light uh, government authorized uh, you know connections. So you know you're very sensitive to the ecosystem as a whole and that we think is, is getting truly global uh, and that is what our largest set of clients expect. The Millennium City does have its challenges and DLF has recognized that. The overwhelming congestion on the roads has prompted DLF to change the way Gurgaonites commute. Construction of a 16-lane toll-free expressway in partnership with Huda at an estimated cost of 550 crore rupees is underway. DLF's infrastructure plans do not end with creating a road and rail network. DLF office spaces are equipped with a 100 megawatt captive power plant. These power plants cater not just to the power needs of offices, but also to some residential complexes of DLF. Today, DLF is the only developer with two operational fire stations. These fire tenders have 90 meter high hydraulic sky lifts that can reach up to 30 floors. It's going beyond the obvious, which makes DLF an example for even state governments to follow in fire safety norms. DLF ki management ka ye bahut clear views hai ke humne latest vehicle ke saath, latest technology ke saath logon mein ye vishwas create kar rahe hain ki tum aaram se so hum safety ke liye arrangement kiye hue hain. The other success story of DLF has been its acumen in cracking the complicated SEZ code. DLF has already rented out around 11 million square feet of SEZ space it has created. We've got large SEZ footprint in Gurgaon, uh, which has again been very promising, so is in Kolkata. So we do see uh, still a lot of companies uh, coming forward uh, to take some of the tax benefits uh, advantages. However, the top leadership does recognize that SEZ is an increasingly challenging business to be in. We have more than 10, 11 million square feet of uh, SEZ space, IT SEZ space already rented out. But going forward, are we constructing? The answer seems to be no, because we do not see the same demand what was there in 2007, 2008 coming now, because the charm has been lost with so many taxes, so much confusion, so much of uh, the mat being imposed, not imposed, time frames, uh, you know, extended, sunrise clauses, sunset clauses. So with all those things, you know, that what used to be as a foreign territory in India, that story has been lost completely. Come for a peek inside and we will tell you more about how DLF is able to sustain its buzzing mall business with footfalls growing steadily. Offering typically 5 to 10 lakh square feet of retail space in expensive locations of South Delhi, the 10 DLF malls in and around Delhi, NCR and Chandigarh seem to be the preferred choice for shoppers. What tops the list of the true and deep-pocketed shopaholics though is the most upmarket shopping address that DLF has given to the national capital, DLF Emporio. This is the first and foremost address for the world's top luxury brands. All the brands commodated into one place and as well like my daughter and my wife, they both prefer a lot of brands. So I feel that you know shopping in India and coming to DLF Emporio such a location, you have many many options available. Emporio has already checked into the A-list of luxury shoppers. But DLF says the game change in India's mall business will be the coming soon Mall of India with a whopping 1.8 million square feet of retail space. This statement mall will leave all benchmarks behind with its sheer size and different shopping experience. Expected to open at the start of the new year of 2014 in Noida, the challenge will be to fill up this mega mall with adequate footfalls when the city is already dotted with over 12 malls. Uh, with the single brand FDI opening, a lot of the international brands 
have shown tremendous interest to come in and uh, partner with us in this project. DLF is gung-ho about its small business and plans to add two more to its portfolio. One at Chanakya in central Delhi and the other at upmarket DLF golf course area in Gurgaon. Both these projects are currently in the drawing board stage. With uh, almost about uh, 50 odd uh, malls that we have, with about uh, 30, 35 million square feet of uh, mall space in NCR and growing because going forward we also see approximately 1 million square, sorry, 10 million uh, square footage to be added in next two years or so. And with a single mall like a, like a, a DLF one in, uh, in, in, in Noida, which is 2 million square feet, single development. So there are a lot many of these things happening which are uh, hinting at a, 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 a positive scenario emerging for NCR retail mall space. Like its office business, DLF is clear that in its retail segment too, the focus will continue to be the NCR. Retail business requires a lot of management bandwidth and the management involvement. That is the reason why we want to concentrate on the NCR. Hopefully for the next two years also we will have to be in NCR because we are starting the Mall of India, Gurgaon. So obviously our focus will be on NCR. But the verdict is clear. India's largest real estate company by far is making the most of the opportunities in commercial, retail and office space and an economic slowdown or not, its plans to plow ahead remain intact. The story of GLF is never really complete till you hear it first hand from the man behind the country's most valuable and enviable real estate business. Next week, we bring you a candid conversation with Chairman K.P. Singh as he captures the nuances of his and DLF's journey. Town planning norms are still not, uh, not commensurate with the ground reality, with the future requirement. That is what Rajiv Gandhi and Arun Singh point was. Think big.